Good morning to you all and welcome to Sunday School. Should you wish to join the Zoom class, please use the Zoom link now. And our opening congregational song for this morning shall be taken from our SSNS in 263. We shall all listen to the tune first and then sing along together. Uh, please remember to mute your devices while the singing is going on. God bless you all. God for another Sunday. Glory be to God for his mercy to have kept us through all the dangers that is hovering everywhere all over the world. We, we give glory and honor to his name. We thank him for preserving us. Today we play, pray that God will come and bless all of us through this lesson. God will come and speak to each and everyone's heart. We pray that God will come and teach us himself. We pray for our teacher that God will give him auction from above. And at the end of the day, God will bless us, save us, sanctify and baptize with Holy Ghost and fire. For we have prayed in Jesus' name. Good morning and uh, welcome to our Sunday School lesson today. It is my prayer that God will bless us all. We are learning lesson five. We are learning lesson five and the title of our lesson today is the first skyscraper the first skyscraper. I, I, I try to look at the definition of what a skyscraper is. Um, and according to Wikipedia, a skyscraper is a continuously habitable high rise building that has um, over 40 floors, at least 44 floors, and is typically taller than uh, 150 meters. Uh, historically, the, the, the term first referred to buildings with, with, with 10 to, to, to about 20 floors and, that, and, and the term kind of was, uh, was coined in the, in the 1880s. Um, so when you're talking about the uh, skyscraper, we're looking at a very tall mass multi-story building. Uh, and today's lesson is focusing on the very, very first one. Um, so the first skyscraper. So we look at our memory verse for this week. Uh, and if you don't mind, uh, could you repeat it or recite it uh, along with me? One. Thus, the cast be the, his arm and whose heart departed from the Lord. 
and that's from Jeremiah 17, verse 5. God bless you. God bless you. Um, to start off our lesson today, we just want to look back at, at this first sky, skyscraper. And we're going to have a really quick kind of poll uh, or a quiz, as you as as some may choose to call it, just just to understand, you know, that we are still reeling from the effect of what occurred, and that uh, when people of uh, the time, the descendants of Noah, attempted to build a skyscraper. God bless you. So. I would like you to, to tell me if you can use the chart facility, just type the language or dialect you recognize or you know is spoken in this particular country. We're gonna share, we're gonna display, we're gonna display a flag and a name of a country. Please, could you tell me the language? Just type in the chat if you can, or just type in the chat if you can, the name of the languages or a dialect that is spoken in this particular country. God bless you. So here's the first country. Here is the first country. What language or dialect is spoken in this country? Canada. What language is spoken in this country? Canada. Feel free to type in your responses in the chat. So because of the attempt to build this skyscraper, the first skyscraper, as a result, we now have so many languages in the country, in, in the world today, uh, and people are now dispersed throughout all of the earth. So which country, which language is spoken in Canada? Why dialects? God bless you. English and French, thank you. Awesome, awesome. That is lovely. God bless you. We will look at the next country. And our next country is Nigeria. 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 So which languages are spoken in Nigeria? I believe there's tens and tens of languages spoken in Nigeria and many various dialects of those languages. So again, which, which languages do you recognize from Nigeria? God bless you. And remember, it's all to do with that skyscraper, the skyscraper, the first skyscraper that the descendants of Noah attempted to build. God bless you, God bless you. Um, Nigeria. Nigeria, keep those answers coming in. Yes, we got Yoruba, we got Hausa, and English as well in Nigeria. Uh, we got Igbo, God bless you. Thank you, Brother John. Too many to list. <laughs> yes, and it all came from uh, that first skyscraper. skyscraper. And as we had in the answer class, the Tower of Babel. Uh, and, and there's many countries, right? Uh, in Zimbabwe, you can you can you can feel free to carry on to type those 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 languages. Um, well, probably somebody's coming up with Ndebele, Shona, um, and very quickly in our very own United Kingdom, uh, we have English. You know, we 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 we've got the Welsh, we've got the Scottish, we we've got all uh, 
sort of dialects and accents, the Cockney accents, if you go up to the north, the Scottish, although they speak English, they have uh, a, a different accent. You know, as we look at the world today, there's so many human language, families scattered all over the world. And all of this started off when men attempted to build the first skyscraper. So where did it all begin? It all began in Babel. It all began in Babel. It all began in Babel. God bless you. Thank you for all those answers. Sean and Debele, Ndawu, spoken in, in, in different parts of Zimbabwe as well. Oh, what a mighty God we saved. Glory to God. Thank you for those responses. We have an opportunity today to learn from this incident, from the activity that was done. We're going to read from Genesis chapter 11, verse 1 to 9, just to set a bit of context. I'm sure most of us have throughout the week been going through this lesson. Um, let's just quickly recap. We will read from our text. Uh, and, and I'm reading from Genesis chapter 11, verse 1 to 9. And the whole earth was of one language. The whole earth was of one language and of one speech. This was before men attempted to build the skyscraper. Verse 2. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar and they dwelt there. Verse 3. And they said one to another, go to. Let us make brick and bend them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime had they for mortar. Verse 4. And they said, go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make a name lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. Verse 5, and the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. Verse 6, and, and the Lord said, behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And this they begin to do, and now, the, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. 7, go to let us go down. And they confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech. Eight. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Nine and the last. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth, and from there did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. So we learned that the, the, the building of, of Babel took place approximately about 100 years after the flood, if you recall the lesson from last, last week. And at that time, the people of the earth, and, and they were all descendants of Noah. They decided, you know, they were, they were united they had a, a, a really strong God, and that was the common language. The Bible says here in, in verse 1, the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And then, you know, my prayer is that God may help us to learn from this mistake or the mistakes of the people of Babel, which led to their failure. You know, just 100 years after God used that righteous man, Noah, uh, and the people, you know, they went on to build a city and the tower. They attempted to find their, 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 their own security and exalt themselves, ignoring God's command to replenish the earth. We're going to see and explore that in our lesson today. My prayer is that God may help us to embrace the blessings, you know, that come 
by building our spiritual structure, our spiritual house, according to God's word. According to God's word. Now let's look at our first discussion point uh, for this morning. Let's look at our first discussion point for this morning, and it's focusing on the verse. Genesis chapter 11 there, and we're just going to look at verse 3. Verse 3. God bless you. So who did the people of Babel? Who did the people of Babel consult with? You know, as, 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 they, as they made plans to build this uh, city and the tower. Who, who, who did they... Who did they approach about the matter? Who, who, you know, they, they, they plan to build a city, but who exactly did they consult? According to Genesis 11 verse three, God bless you, God bless you. Feel free to type in your responses in our chat. Feel free to type in your responses in our chart. We want to understand who they should have approached about the matter and, and, and why, you know, um, that you think they should have approached uh, this particular person about this matter. Who did the people of Babel consult? You know, when they chose to make plans and build the city and the tower, Sister Noctula um, themselves. Yes, God bless you. They spoke to each other, uh, Esther says, God bless you. God bless you. Yes, uh, who, who should they have approached about the matter? You know, they in Genesis 11 verse 3, they, we, we learn they said one to another, they said one to another. God bless you. Obviously, they left God out of their plans, you know. Uh, and may God help us to realize that it is important to, to include God in all of our plans. You know, in James, we are reminded uh, in James chapter 4, verses 18 through to 17, uh, it gives us some key words, you know. If the Lord wills, we will do this. If the Lord permits, if, you know, by God's grace, God willing, we will do uh, so. So we'll attempt this. We will do this. God helping us if the Lord will. So may, may God help us to include him in all of our plans. Let's, let's, let's have a look. Let's, let's just deep do a, a bit of a deep dive into uh what were some of the reasons can you tell me what were some of the reasons why the men of babel decided to build a city you know they confirmed they conferred among themselves what were some of the reasons why they they decided to build the city They, they didn't consult God. God bless you. God bless you. They didn't consult God. They should have consulted God. But what, what were the reasons? What were the reasons why they attempted to build the city? The clue is in verse 4. The clue is in verse 4. I'm going to read it again. And they say, go to, let us build a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Yes, you know, verse 4 tells us that they desired to make themselves a name uh, and they wanted to prevent, you know, their being scattered. 
over the face of the whole earth. May God help us. You know, God pays particular attention to men's motives and their desires to obey or disobey him. God knows what is in our hearts. God knows the intention of our hearts. Don't forget that God had given them a, 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 a clear instruction to replenish the earth. God is truly interested in our plans. May God help us to, to make sure that our, our plans are aligned uh, to God's will for our lives. God bless you. God bless you. They wanted to make a name from that for themselves. M.M. Jimmy, thank you. God bless you. Jill Mokfumo says to oppose and destroy God's plans. Oh, may God deliver us from, from that folly. You know, the Bible tells us that pride goeth before destruction and a hot and haughty spirit before a fall. Gilma Fuma has rightly pointed out, you know, that the reason given in, in verse 4 was in conflict with God's command to Noah. The men of Babel wished to really concentrate their power, you know, just to build uh, a place where they would continually, continually dwell as a kingdom you know, as a people, rather than do as God had instructed to replenish the earth, to repopulate the earth. May God help us. Men's desires often result in an attempt to rationalize, you know, uh, weigh God's word by wrestling scripture out of context. Sometimes we attempt, people will attempt to explain, you know, provide explanations, which in a sense say God didn't mean what he said. You remember when we learned uh, about the, the cunning serpent and, and how he posed that question to, to Eve, did God say? And then she started to rationalize, may God help us, may God help us. If our plans are in, God's, are in conflict with God's word, we can be sure they will meet disaster. Amen, 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 amen. Thank you so much for those responses. So God is definitely looking upon the earth. And he visited the people as they attempted to build the city and tower of Babel. I wonder why. I wonder why. So the question is, is, is God interested in our plans today? We see that he, he visited the people of Babel when they were attempting to build the tower, the first skyscraper. Is God interested in our plans today? If he, if I, be, I believe God is interested in our plans today, just as he was and has always been. The Bible tell, tells us that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So could you name some ways in which the Lord makes his visits known to men? Could you name some ways in which the Lord makes his visits known to men, particularly in our time today? How does God reveal himself to us? How does God reveal himself to us? Yes, God bless you. So we know that God himself According to the text, God himself visited the people at Babel. Um, God still visits us today. Sister Noctula Nyakua, he sure is interested. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. God himself visited the people at Babel. So let us name some ways in which the Lord makes his visits known to men. Today, how, how does God reveal himself to us? How has the Lord revealed himself to you? And Amazondo says, through his word, praise God, praise God, praise God. We learn in, in the New Testament that uh, in times past, God spoke through his, his prophets. Uh, but in our time, he's spoken to us through his son, Jesus. You know, he's the word of God. M.M. Jim says, uh, God can share his glory with anyone is also interested in the affairs of man. Uh, Rachel says in your dream, after praying, God bless you. Uh, through the Holy Spirit, Temi Tope, um, uh, John, through dreams, visions, people in everyday life. Uh, Debbie uh, says, by the word of God, or listening to Sunday school like this, God bless you. God bless you. God is vitally interested in how each one of us builds his spiritual house. So he's so interested. In fact, he visits his people just like, uh, you know, uh, our brothers and sisters have highlighted there, you know, by his Holy Spirit, there's a voice that speaks to us in our conscience. It speaks to us, it, it tells us the, this is the way to go. Praise God. At times through the preaching of the word. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. At times somebody comes through to us in our lives, in our moment of need, and he witnesses to our souls. And, and he tells us what the truth is. And it is really up to us to embrace it and, 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 and receive it and receive life. God bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Let's look at the next discussion point. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 3, verse 11, it indicates that we, we are co-laborers with God in building our spiritual house. I'll be grateful if you can a list several things which show God's part in this labor. Just want to read that scripture, 1 Corinthians 3, verse 11. We know they attempted to build the skyscraper, which is which was outside God's will. Um, but God is out expecting us to be building our spiritual house, and we want to understand that uh, how as co-liberals, what God's part is in it if as we labor together with god and uh, i'm just going to read here from first corinthians chapter 3 verse 11 while you list several things which show god's part in this in this labor for at the foundation can no man lay than that is laid which is jesus christ For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. May God help us. May God help us. So, it's clear that God finishes the foundation of our spiritual house, which is Jesus Christ. Um, and, and, and that salvation. That salvation from sin through faith in Christ and lays the foundation for our spiritual house. So can we list the things which show God's part as we labor together with him in, in building our spiritual house? Just given there an example, you know, the Bible tells us God so loved the world that he's already given us his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him, believeth in him, should not perish but have everlasting life. God bless you. God bless you. 
So beyond the foundation, beyond the spiritual, the foundation we need to, to build our spiritual house, which is Jesus Christ. What other things show God's part in this labor? We cannot build the house, the spiritual house alone. We cannot be like uh, the people of Babel who attempted to build without God. So let's list several things which show God's part in this labor as we are co-laborers with him in building our spiritual house. God bless you. We, we must co-labor with God in order to, to be kept from sin. Thank you very much for those responses. Yes, we need to seek the sanctification of our saved souls. God bless you, Sister Nyakua, um, and the baptism of, of the Holy Spirit. That's how we build our spiritual house. God bless you. God bless you. And what is our part? Let's also list several things which show our part in it. So what is our part? God has made a provision. He's made provision for salvation, which is the forgiveness of our sins through the blood of Jesus Christ. And we stand before God as, 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 as clean and sinless, having been washed. God takes away the dross of sin from our lives. Glory be to God. And he sanctifies our hearts holy. And he baptizes us with the Holy Spirit. Glory be to God. He gives us power to endure. God bless you, brother, brother Lawrence. Rachel says, um, Sister Rachel says, through salvation, sanctification, and baptism of the Holy Spirit. So we must collaborate with God. And our part really uh, is, is to study and apply God's word to our lives. And to do as Jesus said, you must be born again. We must be born again. It says, be you holy as I'm holy. We need to seek that holiness. We must watch and pray that we enter not into temptation. Glory be to God. Thank you very much. Let's apply God's word in our lives. God's part is to give us his peace and power. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Glory be to God. Amen. Amen. Through consecration. God bless you, Tim. Our part is to consecrate our lives daily. Thank you, Debbie. And work in his light. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for those contributions. So we, we see that we cannot build our spiritual house without God. We cannot do this without God at all. There's a part that God is playing, and there is definitely a part that we should be playing in obedience to God's word. God bless you. Yes, Juliet. Uh, daily consecration, daily consecration. You know, Jesus talks about, you know, if any man will follow him, let him take up his cross daily and, and, and follow him. No man having put his hands to the plow and looking back is therefore fit for the kingdom of God. Thank you very much. Um, so just sticking with the theme of building our spiritual house, uh, and by God's grace, we are not going to be like the people of Babel, you know, who set out to make a name for themselves, who set out to deliberately go against God's will and God's command to build a tower and a city, a skyscraper for themselves, to attempt to reach to the heavens and establish a name for themselves. We want to, as Ola says, 
we want to be able to walk as he leads. Now we want to be able to build our spiritual house as God commands. Let's have a look at our next uh, study or, or discussion point. So we want to see um, from 1 Corinthians, again, chapter 3, we want to look at verse 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, we're going to look at verse 12. God bless you, living a holy life always. Thank you, Rachel. We're going to move on to the next discussion point. And I'm reading here from 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 12. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, verse 13, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. God help us. So we are building our spiritual house. What materials might one use to build his spiritual house? According to verse 12, what materials might one use to build his spiritual house? What materials? And in verse and in verse 11, we already learned that uh, for other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. I'm going to take it from verse 9 while you list the materials, you know, that we might use to build his spiritual house, just to provide and, 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 and bring back a bit of context to this discussion point. So verse 9 says, for we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Husbandry. I beg your pardon. I'll take it again. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another buildeth there on and let us let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon for at the foundation can no man lay that that is laid which is Jesus Christ now if any man build upon this foundation gold silver precious stones wood hay stubble every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort is. Right, so what materials might one use to build his spiritual house? Thank you for those responses. Chidi uh, says gold, silver, and wood. Gold for my Christian experiences. Thank you. Um, that's from Noctula. And Anna says, gold, silver, precious stones. You see gold and silver there are, are quite prominent, are quite common. God bless you. 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 Thank you for those responses. Rachel says, by being consecrated, by being consecrated, by concentrating more on the things of God, doing it with whole, doing it whole, I think it, it's doing it wholeheartedly. Uh, and Kia Walker, reading the Bible and praying every day. So what materials are we using to build our spiritual house? We already have uh, had those contributions from from many of us, many of you, uh, in clearly indicating that we need to invest in the gold, in the silver of sanctification and the baptism of the Holy Ghost. These are truly precious stones in our spiritual house. 
our, our spiritual house cannot be complete without sanctification. The Bible says we, we, we need to seek holiness without which no man uh, shall see God. Glory be to God. Quality materials, Remy. Thank you. Quality materials, deep consecration and prayers. Thank you. You know, sanctification brings a special unity with Jesus Christ and with, with, with our Lord uh, and God's purposes into our life. And, and the baptism of Holy Ghost, as, men, uh, uh, as many of you have, have indicated, gives us that Christian power to witness for the Lord. And somebody has, has, has pointed us to the, to the fruits of the Spirit, you know, those character attributes that should constitute our spiritual house. It forms part of the architecture of our spiritual house. Shall we read in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 23? What are those precious stones, right, that we are building upon the foundation, which is our Jesus Christ? But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. What is this? What are the, let's look at what constitutes gold and silver. 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 7. 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 7. We are building our spiritual house and this is the material that we need. 1 Peter chapter 5. Sorry, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 5 and 7. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 5 and uh, through to 7. Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation. Ready to be revealed in the last time. 6. Wherein you greatly rejoice though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. Verse 7, that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perishes, through, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Those are the character attributes, you know, of those that are building their spiritual house. Glory be to God. Trial of our faith is more precious than gold. He that will endure to the end the same shall be saved. Glory be to God. Part of, of building is bearing the fruits of the Spirit. Yes, Abimbola, God bless you. And we do that uh, through witnessing for Jesus. That, that's an indispensable part of building our house. In Galatians 3, it reminds us that trusting in, in one's own works, you know, proceeding with spiritual pride and, and self-righteousness is to build with wood, hay, or, or stubble. Let's read that. That's not the way we want to build. Galatians chapter 3, verse 2. We want to understand what the wood and the stubble is. We want to be building using the precious stones. But this, this, is, this is the kind of material we will not use, the wood and the stubble. Galatians, God bless you. We want to use quality material. Thank you, Remy. So this is the stuff that is not quality. Galatians 2, Galatians 3, verse 2 and 3. This only would I learn of you. Re received ye the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? 3. Are you so foolish, having begun in the spirit, are you now made perfect by the flesh? 
You see here, we see the folly of trusting in one's own works and proceeding with spiritual pride, you know. Uh, may God help us not to lean or, on our own self-righteousness because that, that is building with wood or hay or stubble. Let's choose to build God helping us with quality materials. Amen, amen, amen. Now, obviously when we build the spiritual house, we are not doing it in vain. We are not doing it in vain. There is a reward. The Bible says, it shall all be tried by fire. We want to build a house that will stand the trial by fire. So examples for, of, of, of building with wood and hay, especially in these last days would be, you know, other concerns such as our priorities. What are we, what are we concerned about in these latter days? The Bible says men shall be lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. Just like the people in Babylon, they were lovers of themselves, seeking to make a name from themselves and building that skyscraper. The Bible talks of the love of many waxing cold, you know, neither hot nor, nor cold, lukewarmness. We, we read of that in Revelations. And carnality, walking after the flesh, having a form of godliness. You know, they say, there goes a brother. But remember, God visits us. God knows us. God is interested in us. God is interested in our plans, and therefore he knows the intentions, our thoughts, our desires, our inclination. May God help us. May God help us to choose to build with the quality material. If you're not saved today, you can start building on that rock foundation, the solid foundation the chief cornerstone, the precious stone, the rock of ages, Jesus Christ, our eternal rock, the foundation, oh, glory be to God. And then today you can cry out to God. You can seek a deeper experience if you're already saved and God will still sanctify holy. Today the spirit of God is is, is available. The Bible says the promise is ours. You can be enjoyed with power from high, on high as you wait on the Lord for the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. We don't want to deviate from God's blueprint. You know, any deviation from God's blueprint, which is the Bible, is using wood, hay, or stubble. If you are not building according to God's blueprint, you know, salvation, sanctification, all this wonderful uh, you, 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 uh, material that we have been discussing. If you're not building using that, you have we would have uh, deviated from God's blueprint. As we come to the end of our lesson today, just want to read from Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 and 23. As we do that, could you, th let's think about how is it possible to lose the heavenly reward which might have been gained in our service for Christ? We know that the people of Babel were scattered. God used a nonviolent means. The languages, the languages, the languages. They began in Babel. <laughs> the world was no longer one language. Imagine somebody trying to pass on a brick and uh, say in English, perhaps uh, uh, whatever language they, they were using. Some scholars think uh, it, was, it could have been Hebrew. Everybody was speaking the same language. Pass me the brick and the other person couldn't understand that language anymore. Maybe they were speaking in Yoruba. Um, God knows our thoughts and our motives. He knows all of our actions. May God help us to obey. May, may we just stick to God's 
blueprint. That, that is a key factor in our lives. Obedience is the way to go. Because if we fail to obey, we will someday hear those words. I never knew you depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So if, uh, if our spiritual house is to withstand you know, the fire, it must conform day by day to God's holy word. God bless you. Now, should, should we find through prayer and, and, and as we look into God's word, as we examine ourselves, as many of you have pointed out, consecrating daily, uh, when we realize that we need to improve, Christ has promised to reveal this to us. Well, let us be sure that we are adding gold and silver to our Christian character. And, and let's do that daily. You know, so, so that when our Lord comes, at any moment, or we be called suddenly to leave this world, we'll be greeted with the words, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Well, may God bless you. May God bless you. We've been looking at that first skyscraper, the first skyscraper we've seen the failure, you know, of the people of, uh, of Babel at the time. And my prayers that God may help us to embrace the blessings that come when we build our spiritual house according to God's blueprint. It is outstanding uh, that, you know, with Noah still alive, about 100 years after the flood, the people of the earth should so lose their fear of God, you know, that they did not hesitate to join themselves in a project defying him. Now, we have learned that because of their disobedience, God intervened and confused their language, and thus preventing the world from again being given over totally to sin and lawlessness. God's word is our blueprint for building our spiritual house. Let's not deviate from this blueprint. I, I, I want to reemphasize and reiterate that, you know, deviation from this blueprint will result in the same confusion and disaster experienced by the people of Babel. Thank you very much. Uh, may God bless you. We've come to the end of our lesson. We shall now all sing along to the closing song entitled Wonderful Words of Life. It will be rendered by a sec sextet. Um, this will be followed by the closing prayer uh, from our sister Jomuke Olaiwola. God bless you.
not just hear us alone. Amen. Come and bless us today. Amen. Bless all our services. Amen. Thank you for our teacher. Glory be to your name. For we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.